Welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing. Uh, I'm Chris Jones and today we're gonna be, um, as you guessed, looking at some hand pours. And uh, I'm gonna show you um, just some basic hand pouring. I'm not a master. Um, I'm gonna show you a few examples of what a master's, look, uh, a master's work looks like. But um, yeah, so I've been wanting to do some hand pouring videos for quite a while. Um, I just, I only had just a few molds. Now I've got a little more variety going. Um, so, you know, I can start doing, I think, some better content with it. So um, that's what we're gonna be doing today. I've got like a gizzard, shad sort of color in my head. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be looking at that and, uh, and we're gonna be talking a lot about hand pouring and uh, some of the things that you can do. Um, but real quick, I'm gonna show you some of the things that you can do. Here are some examples of some hand pours that I have laid out behind me. And um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take a look. Okay, so we have quite a spread of stuff here. And uh, you'll see some really crazy stuff. I mean, look at that. Um, I mean, look at this swim bait, just the detail, you know, just some of the things that you can accomplish with hand pouring. Um, and then, you know, obviously you can, you know, add color effects to them. Uh, you know, so here are some pours that I did. Um, this is like a green shad. In fact, uh, my latest video, uh, fishing video where I was throwing the Alabama rig before Christmas, uh, I was using this bait. Here are some little three inch hand pours that I did. Um, and just kind of like a rainbow shad, so, so to speak. And you can see I, you know, jazzed them up with some different color effects. Um, these really crazy worms, uh, these are by my good buddy Brad. He, uh, he owns Oracle Lures. And, um, I mean, that's just how crazy hand pouring can get right there. That is exquisite work. Um, here's a couple more of his pours right here. A little swim bait he makes called the Kirby. And uh, this color uh, is actually called, I think, LA Lakers, um, which I think is awesome because it's obviously Laker colors. Here's uh, the big version of this mold right here. This is what we're gonna be pouring today, but that's the big version of that. And uh, this is also one of Brad's uh, Oracle Lure colors right here that he does, as is this little jerk shad right here. I mean, just look at look at how awesome that is. Um, you know, and then here's some other pours. So, um, you know, this is kind of what it can be. You know, this is like, you know, really, really great stuff here. Um, you know, some of my pours are a little more basic, but uh, we're learning, so. Uh, with that said, um, I just kind of wanted to show you guys some really cool stuff, um, some stuff that you you know may not see from injection. Um, you know, you can get some really great effects uh, from injection. I've hopefully been showing some of those over the last year, and um, you know, and now we're going to show uh, the other side of things, some uh, the hand pouring side. So, without further ado, today's video hand pouring. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first things first, we're going to be pouring a silicone mold today. You can see it's very, very, very flexible. This is um, the little ribbed swim bait. So you've probably seen um, me do, or, or post pictures of at least, um, a little bit larger size, a six inch version of that. I also have the eight inch version um, in a uh, resin mold. However, this is the four and a half or four and three quarter uh, ribbed swim bait. Um, it's a Stanks bait mold, um, so you can buy like every size of this bait. They, I mean, they offer like three and a half inches all the way up to the eight inch Mondo that I had on the table earlier. So that's what we're going to be doing. And I recommend, um, it, at least I've had better results using the smaller cups. So these are only one cup Pyrexes, and they have a little bit of a more narrow uh, pouring nozzle and they're lighter, it's just easier to keep them steady than a larger cup, um, you know, and, unless you've been doing this a long, long time and you can, you know, probably handle the larger cups. Um, so I had kind of a gizzard shad color in mind and uh, let me get my 
Uh, let me get my rag clean up a little bit. So I want to do like a top kind of charcoal black top and then a pearl white bottom. Um, nothing fancy, you know. This is today. Today's video is more about just actual hand pouring than it is a certain color. Um, so we're just going to add a little bit of black here. And, uh, you know, that's only three quarters of a cup, so a lot of black really goes a long way. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to remember these are not uh, full cups here. Um, all right, so we're going to stir that in real nice and slow. Don't want to create more bubbles, more bubble trouble. Okay. And then the other side is going to be straight pearl white. Okay, nothing fancy there. We're not mixing pearls or anything like that. Just straight white pearl. I'm gonna add a full uh, quarter teaspoon, and then I'm gonna add another one. I want I want some serious white pearlage going on here. Okay, and then if you look at shad scales, they always have like an iridescent sheen to them. Um, so we're gonna use blue highlight to achieve that. So we're gonna load up some blue highlight in the bottom. On, on the pearl side for sure okay full scoop and then I also want some blue highlight um, in the top side in the uh, gray side or black side okay so again we're gonna stir in and uh, as I've said a hundred times really got to stir these powders um, they sure like to clump up let's see let's get knife going on the other one because that has a bunch of powders in it okay and uh, we're gonna stir these up for a couple of moments and then we're gonna heat them up and there again these are smaller cups smaller quantities of plastic I would do about four minutes for both of those and uh, and then kind of go from there and um, hopefully that doesn't overcook them it didn't yesterday so uh, it should not today either Okay, so both cups, and uh, we, we are living large today, folks, because we have a new microwave. What? The other one was just on its last leg, so uh, I got to get a couple more stickers, but um, yeah, MF sent me a sticker uh, in my last package, so thank you, MF, and, uh, and of course, the deadheads. All right, so about four minutes, and uh, should be good. So now we're going to add uh, a little bit of flake. We're just gonna do some medium hex cut black. So we're gonna do a little bit, just a smidge. So this is a quarter of a teaspoon. We're doing like a third of that <laughs> in the top. And then um, about the same in the bottom. I don't want too much flake in this. Just enough to just give it a little bit of texture so that it's just not the, the two straight colors. Perfect, that's about what I wanted to see. Let's go to this side. Perfect. That's about that's about right. And then in the top side, I'm going to add just a little bit of um, this is what equivalates to uh, 0.35 square cut silver. Um, this is actually a sample uh, that MF sent me of some of their new glitters. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that too. Not a whole lot. There again, just enough so that, you know, just enough that you know it's there, maybe. Um, but not anything, we're, we're not overdoing it with the flakes. Um, maybe a smidge more, just a smidge. Okay, so cool. Appreciate it from the guys over at MF. Um, all right, so here's what we have. We have these two colors. And this is going to be the top, that's going to be the bottom. We're going to basically do a laminate of sorts. And I think this will look kind of cool. Um, okay. So, we're going to go ahead and heat these up. Um, so, kind of about hand pouring, it's a lot easier to pour with really hot plastic. It, it you know, it has a higher viscosity or lower, what, I, I don't really know my viscosities like I should. Um, the hotter it is, the easier it is to pour, it's more runny. Um, however, you can get some really great effects by playing with your thermals here. So if one color is much colder than the other, they're gonna mix really cool. Um, 
we're gonna kind of go for more of a straight laminate today. Um, so we're gonna get them fairly equal. So I'm gonna pop them back in the microwave and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, we're gonna try to do this around the camera so that we can uh, hopefully get some good angles. I don't, don't know how well this will work, to be honest. Yeah, that's already really tricky. I'm got to try and get it um, to where I'm not all screwed up around the around the uh, camera. Okay, and good there. All right, we'll try and do number two here. Just gonna fill it up to kind of the top of those ridges. Okay. All right, let it sit. Number three. Okay. All right, and then here's our top color. So we're gonna let those sit for just a minute. That way our laminate, you know, that way they won't mix together too much because I want them to try and kind of be uh, good laminates. I don't know, we'll see. So we're just, you know, you don't want to let them set up all the way, but um, you definitely don't want them, uh, you know, to go in at the same time. You'll wind up with something more like a swirl than anything else. Um, okay. So let's try and get this top color in. Okay, got the tail nice and full. It's always the tails that are tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Right, we're gonna fill in the body a little bit more. Okay, looking good. All right, next up we'll get this one. Okay. And just keep going until we mess up, right? It's basically what it is. You're just rolling the dice till you mess one up real bad. <laughs> At least in my case. All right. All righty. That wasn't uh, my worst run. So anyway, we're gonna go with that and see what we get. Okay. Drum roll, please. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. All right, let's pop this first one out and um, and see what we have. We're just going to kind of grab the tail portion and uh, should ease right on out. Okay, not too bad. You know, we have some trimmings left over that we need to get off, but uh, you know you're kind of always going to have that. Hopefully that's um, hopefully that's on on camera there. Okay, not horrible. And uh, like I said, you know, this is quite the learning curve if you're an injection guy like me trying to come over to hand pouring. Um, it is just such a different world. Um, but it's so interesting. It's, it's so different. And, uh, and it's such a challenge. Okay. That one's looking pretty sharp. I got a pretty good edge. Yeah, I got a pretty good edge on this one as a whole. All right, we're going to lay that one out. And then, you know, what you do is you trim them up. Um, you know, you, you kind of trim off you know, some, of the, some of the edges and, and the extras. And, uh, and then that, that really cleans them up. Then you add your eyeballs. And, uh, and we'll do all that here uh, in just a little while. Okay. That one was a little, I did a little too much of the belly. You're, I'm not really getting a whole lot of the top color on the sides. So, um, not exactly how I wanted that one to turn out, but that's okay. In fact, we'll set that one aside because I think we, I think these other ones look a little better. Um, okay, last but not least. Yeah, not bad. Not bad again. Okay. All right, so four out of five isn't too bad for a, for a noob like me. And uh, we'll trim those up and then I'll meet you back. And actually, real quick, I was just gonna show you a little bit of trimming. So, for example, that little piece, gone. We don't need that in our lives, um, you know, and then there's always a little bit around the tails. So we have some of these little extras here. Okay, trim those out, gone. 
Uh, same with the other side of the tail. You know, there's a little bit going on there, so trim that. Okay, trim that as well, gone. We don't need that kind of negativity in our life. Okay, there's a little bit, a little bit going on up here. Okay, gone. So, you know, that right there is a cleaned up swim bait. And, you know, once that's uh, cooled down a little bit, we'll put some eyeballs on and, uh, and see if we can make them look pretty suave. Why did I just say suave? Jeez, people, I'm losing it. I need a beer. Okay, so unlike the Bloodline swim bait mold, which I've shown on here, um, where you can actually put the eyes into the mold and then fill the mold, um, these you have to glue the eyes on after the fact. Um, now, there are tons of things that people use. People use Loctite. Um, you know, just I bought some of this from Lureworks just because I knew that it would work for this. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to experiment with different adhesives. Um, so basically, we're gonna do similar to what we did um, for the bloodline. I'm just gonna wet the tip of a Cinco, okay? And I'm just gonna dab the inside of that, okay? You don't need much. In fact, less is more um, because you don't want it to be too runny. So now we're just gonna pop a couple eyes in. So let me uh, get these out here, sorry. Should have done this already. Made it look a little smoother. But, um, you know, I think some silver eyes on this will look pretty decent. All right. And, you know, a lot of guys use tools to put these eyes on, you know, just little little elongated tweezers and other, other things. Um, you know, I'm sure I'll get there with more experience when I'm tired of doing it with my fingers. But, uh, you know, for the time being, you know, this is how you can kind of get started doing this sort of thing. All right. So we're just going to kind of hold them in place for a second. All right. Looking good. Looking good. So we're just going to lay that one down and set it aside. Okay. So there's all four right now with their eyes glued on. And then final, uh, the final step is we're going to clear dip them. Now, you don't actually have to clear dip them. Um, you know, once the eyes are glued in, these are done, you know, because they came out of a silicone mold, they're already nice and glossy and shiny. I mean, those are really, really nice in person. But if you just want to seal the eyes in or a little extra protection and give them just a tad bit more shine, you can clear dip. So we're going to show you uh, um, what clear dipping is. It's fairly simple. Um, and uh, and then we're, we're actually going to clear dip all four of them and then lay them out just like this and then we'll have another look. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna take this swim bait, we're gonna dip it in, okay, all the way up to about the tail portion. All right, we're gonna take it out and just let that kinda drip for a minute, okay? All right, and um, now, you know, a lot of people would go ahead and hang them up uh, you know, you could build a rack to hang them up by their tails or just hang them up however you want. Um, and, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, this this plastic, you know, I can already touch that. Um, I don't recommend it because you'll get fingerprints. But that's pretty much what we do. And after you're done, um, you just clip off that, that front uh, little tab that I'm holding it by. So you can see how glossy it makes the baits. And it just gives them a really nice... I think it gives them a really nice finished look. Um, so yeah, that is um, clear dipping basic level 101. Okay, there we go. Those are today's hand poured swim baits. Um, and again, uh, this is um, a Stanks mold. Um, the, the silicone, it's one of their silicone uh, rib swim bait molds. You can, uh, you can purchase that mold there and uh, really high quality stuff. And um, yeah, so I hope you like the color. It it actually doesn't look as gizzard shaddy as I thought it would. Um, I probably would have. I probably should have gone a little more brown, dark top uh, and less blue highlight. But nonetheless, I really like the look of those. So I'm happy with it. And um, you know, my hand pouring isn't as pretty uh, to watch as some guys who are just so good with a cup. But you know, this is how you get these finished. Uh, you know these finished looking swim baits and uh, I mean, it's just hard to beat 
the way that these look in the water. You know, injected swim baits are incredible. I wouldn't give up my boom shad for the world. You know, this is just something that they don't see as often as store-bought injected baits. And um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, a little bit of hand pouring action. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, some a little new. Uh, I've shown hand pouring like just a few times on the channel. Just um, I, my latest video on like the guide to getting started with baits. Um, I did a quick hand pour at the end. Um, so hopefully this one was a little more in depth. Um, and coming soon, you know, we'll get a little more crazy with it. We'll do some swirls. Um, we'll use the divider cup to pour some cool effects. Um, you know, we'll get into a little, um, you know, color, uh, you know, adding different colors, um, you know, a little bit of painting effects, things like that. Um, and, and then obviously we'll shoot some different molds, um, you know, because you can hand pour away more than just swim baits. Um, swim baits are just kind of where a lot of the cool stuff is happening. But we're going to get some other cool stuff happening with some hand pours as well. Um, so anyway, um, hope these were worth your watch. And, uh, you know, if you're more new to this than I am, I mean, believe me, guys, I, I hand poured a little bit when I first got started back in 2012. Um, and I quickly got into injection. You know, back then I was trying to do big volume. I mean, I wanted to do this full time, big bait business. Um, you know, so the kind of slower more artful hand pours just weren't really the direction i wanted to go um you know in the last few months i've taken more of an interest in it and um and i'm really having a blast learning how some of this stuff is done so um hope you enjoyed it uh if, if you're new hope you learned a little bit and uh and if you um do this all the time i hope it was at least uh, entertaining to watch me try and, and and do it right but uh anyway um that's gonna wrap it up uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a great 2019. Thanks for your support uh, for the channel. Shoot me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in.